Doubles Pickleball Strategy 201 Dinking Strategy. In this video, we are going to talk about the strategies that advanced players use when dinking. Beginners facing other beginners may fare okay by just focusing on keeping the ball in play and low to the net. However, among advanced players, dinking requires shot making skill, strategy, and agility. So what is it that the advanced players do when dinking? In brief, the goal is to apply the maximum stress possible to the opponent team. You make your opponents reach, move, or scramble in hopes of either opening a hole or forcing a weak or popped up return. So how do you do this? Let's first talk about shot placement positions. Three key targets. Advanced players usually aim at one of these three targets. If you are here, you should generally aim here, here, or here. If you are here, you should generally aim here, here, or here. Watch the dinking clips shown here. Almost all shots go to these targets only. Basically, you don't hit to an opponent. Instead, you hit between them or toward sidelines. Notice that almost all shots require the receiver to reach, move, or scramble. Target 1 aims to push the near opponent to the sideline. After returning the ball, he needs to regain position quickly to avoid leaving a hole. Target 2 is low to the opponent backhand and very near the feet. It's rather awkward to return such shots and you can't do much offensively with these. Target 3 is a cross court shot and this is by far the most frequently used shot in dinking. With a great shot you can push the far opponent to the far sideline. After returning the ball, he needs to regain position quickly to avoid leaving a hole. Again, watch the dinking clip shown here. Almost all shots go to these three targets only. An advanced player can steer the ball to any of these targets at will. Avoid hitting to the near opponent if you get drawn out of position beyond a sideline. If you are out of position here, don't hit here. Instead, go cross court. Likewise, if you are out of position here, don't hit here. Instead, go cross court. Watch how advanced players usually direct the ball to the three target locations just discussed. The most difficult dink to master is the sharp cross court shot to the far sideline. However, this is the most effective shot in forcing an opponent error. Watch the extreme stress that these sharp cross-court dinks can create. Most recreational players cannot return such sharply angled shots. Places to avoid. Now let's talk about where to avoid hitting the ball. Among advanced players, it's not wise to dink to the opponent directly across from you. Especially avoid hitting it to his forehand as it sets up a rather easy body shot. Dinking to the opponent directly across from you also invites a lob. In the dinking game, it's best to continuously stress your opponent, making him reach, move, or scramble. Here's another thing to avoid. 
Avoid hitting down a sideline twice or more in a row as this may invite a poach of the net from the sideline. Here's what happens when a net poacher sees a shot coming down the sideline. Watch closely again. Here's what happens when a net poacher sees a shot coming down the sideline. As you can see, advanced players can steer the ball accurately even to very sharp angles. So how does an intermediate player gain this skill? One way is to find a couple of practice partners. Perhaps such practice could occur during a pre-game warm-up. Defense. Now let's talk about defending against opponents who are applying the same pressures. Watch the players on this side of the net. The most important defense is to stay linked to your partner no matter whether the ball goes to you or to your partner. The link can't get broken and your defensive wall must slide in relation to the position of the ball. When operating correctly, your opponent should not ever be able to hit between you and your partner without one of you hitting the ball. Likewise, your team needs to look for and exploit any opponent positioning errors. Here we see what happens if the defensive wall breaks down. Getting out of trouble. No doubt at some point your opponent will get you into trouble. If you get drawn out wide or get in trouble, return the shot cross court to the kitchen, not to the opponent in front of you. Make sure you aim for the kitchen. When in trouble, the kitchen is your friend. A cross court shot to the kitchen is your get out of jail free card. Here we see what many beginners do when they get pulled out wide to a sideline. They pop the ball up and give away the point. So remember, when in trouble near the net, hit cross court into the kitchen. Watch how the top players get out of trouble using this strategy. Another time folks get in trouble is when the ball hits the net and then falls over. Such shots are tough to get. A frequent mistake is to pop it up, directing it straight back over the net. Again, the best strategy is usually to go cross court and into the kitchen. Watch how top players handle these shots. Know when to bail out. Sometimes the best strategy is to exit the dinking game by issuing a surprise lob. If your near opponent is right-handed, a well-disguised lob over his left shoulder can be an excellent strategic move. An ideal time to do this is when your opponent is moving toward you or is very close to you, as might be the case when the ball hits the top of the net but falls into your kitchen area. Even advanced players have trouble handling such lobs. Disguise Adding disguise to your shots helps shorten your opponent's time to react. Head fakes and misdirection shots are an important part of advanced net play. The head fake involves looking one way but hitting another. To some extent, you can practice this by hitting against a wall. Misdirection shots usually involve angling the paddle so that a swing to the left results in a shot to the right and vice versa. You should learn to steer dink shots both left and right using either the forehand or backhand. Lobs from the net and shots to the body should also be disguised by not applying the needed power or direction until the last possible moment. In other words, the shot should appear to be a dink until the last possible moment. If you can't master disguising your shot, at least try to avoid providing a very obvious and lengthy indication of your intent. Watch how this player gives very little advanced signaling of the sharply angled cross-court dink. Look for opportunities to wrong foot your opponent. This means hitting the ball opposite the direction he's traveling. Here's how it can be applied. A great shot to the sideline draws your opponent out wide to the right. He then scrambles left to cover the open court. As he's moving left, you hit back to the right. Uh. 
look for opportunities to poach. Dinking often goes cross-court from backhand to backhand as shown here. Sometimes the strategy is to push the opponent as far as possible back or to the side. While you are involved in such play, your partner should be looking for the opportunity to poach. Get the down the middle shot. Always be on the lookout for the down the middle shot. The down the middle shot is almost certainly a winner if it goes unanswered. There's no time to hesitate or communicate. So, unless it's very clear that your opponent has it, if you can reach it, hit it. Better to have two paddles on it than none. When to pull the trigger. Sooner or later, somebody's going to hit the ball too high. You must always be ready to seize the opportunity and know where to direct the ball. The fast game will be discussed in another video. Good luck with your dinking game.